William in New Bern, how are you? Pretty good, y'all. Pretty good. Good. Um, oh, are you or me weeping? Go ahead. Okay. Well, here in the next line. Hello? Yeah, I keep on hearing the next phone line, and, well, and it's not the um, stream. I have it muted. Are you on a cell phone? Yes. Yeah, that's probably the problem. We see that a lot with cell phones. So just try and get your question out, and we'll address it as best we can. Oh, not bad. I tried calling yes last week when Jen brought up the um, marriage equality, and I'm wondering, as opposed to gay marriage, if having marriage not a legal institution would be the best way for marriage equality. Um, I, I don't see how that's practically feasible. I don't think it's likely to happen. And considering you're di talking about a culture where um, not only, and I'm not just making an appeal to history, I'm saying that there's a ton of people who are married and have benefits from that, you would have to rewrite so much of the law to wipe out marriage benefits and institute a whole new section of contract law to reestablish those benefits in another way. To get, now, don't get me wrong. I've heard this argument before. The government should get out of the marriage business. And maybe in an ideal world, I think I could maybe go along with that, that there's probably not a good justification for giving special treatment to people who happen to couple. But the fact is we do, and it is ingrained in society, and it's not something where I see any reasonable path to get rid of it. And as long as that's the case, I, it should be available to everybody. Well, there's a couple points on that one. I'm trying to, you said there's a lot of things. I'm trying to break it down, but. Um, is it easier to just say, hey, you two guys over here and you two girls over here, you're now allowed to get married and get all these benefits that everybody else has got? Or is it easier to completely eliminate marriage from our culture? Which one's easier? There are two guys and two women. There you go. I can see that point. However, I'm not talking about eliminating marriage culturally, just legally. Okay, which one's easier? Telling, since we already have it established legally and it has worked its way into the laws and, and, in, and integrates into everything from taxes to child support and everything, uh, survivor benefits, who makes decisions about medical stuff, since we have already have all this stuff, which is easier? Giving everybody access to it equally or ripping it out and starting over? Uh, considering my state of it just made it illegal to practice gay marriage, I really don't know. How can, I, wow, how could you not? Um, okay, you realize that the legal marriage is the only thing that anybody's concerned with, right? That's the only marriage that matters. It's the only one that counts. If you say you're married and you're not legally married, we're talking about two different things. Right, so, I'm just, so oh, with, well. with respect to the law, do you think it's easier to, to, to change the law so that now same-sex couples can qualify to marry or to get rid of all of the laws that relate to marriage? I mm. Gay marriage could be easier, and but it's still a little bit harder than you're making it sound. Why? Well, well, okay. Sure. First of all, um, I'm not trying to make it sound hard. I was pointing out something that I thought would be just intuitively obvious to everybody that um, allowing same-sex couples not not considering gender when when marrying as a matter of law is easier than rewriting all the laws around marriage. Um, I also don't know what you mean when you say I'm making that it's harder than I'm making it sound when to me it's pretty easy there's a number of states that have done it you pass a law and guess what when you go get your marriage certificate nobody cares what your gender is anymore how hard was that not very hard that's true but there's also a state mine in particular unfortunately that has it in the Constitution recently saying that gay people can't get married. Okay. So, I mean, how hard would it be to overturn it in states like mine and yours, I'm assuming? 
Ah, we, we might be talking about two different versions of hard. There's hard in the sense of getting the votes to do this, and hard in the sense of the actual application. Do you have something on? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, all the infrastructure in the legal system is already there for marriage. It's just a matter of not discriminating. Um, so in that respect, it's easy. You just <laughs> stop caring what the genders of the people applying for the marriage license are. Um, but when people add these things like you're talking about, the Constitution amendments and things to, you know, to specifically prohibit people from having the same rights as others, that's, you know, it's that is hard to overturn in some states. I'll, I'll, I'll agree with that. But it's still, it would be harder to, like Matt said, remove the institution of marriage from all the legal system. Yeah, I wonder which of those amendments would be harder to pass. The, let's, let's get rid of the amendment that we passed because we didn't want gay people to get married. Or let's pass an amendment that gets rid of marriage. Yeah. I'm not, actually, you know, if there was enough support for it, we could get everybody behind it, I might actually vote for it. Um, for which one? For the, for the elimination of uh, special benefits for people who are married. Um, the problem is, one of my reasons for doing this is that even if we have proper marriage equality, um, there are still issues where people are getting benefits for being married um, when people who aren't married are contributing just as much and, and deserve to be treated equally as well. And so there's, there's still some sort of, un, by the idea of a, of a government sanctioned marriage that has benefits is necessarily uh, going to perpetuate inequality. It's always gonna be married people, single people, there's always gonna be some inequality there. It kind of reminds me a little bit of who gets nonprofit status. Yeah. And my, my position on this is that, you know, you, you've got you should have, you should offer some justification for having a nonprofit status, that you are doing something um, that is of value to the community to support the fact that you're not paying taxes. Because churches get it by default, and yet they still make use of public resources. When, they're, when the church catches on fire or has a you know, flood a damage or lightning, whatever, they still make, they're still calling the police when they get broken into, they're still calling the fire department, and these are services that they're not actually paying for. And so they should make some demonstration that they're doing something that's in the public interest instead of just, you know, lining their pockets. But yeah, so in theory, I agree. It, it, one way to solve the inequality of married versus single people is to is to not make that distinction. But culturally, that's so entrenched that it's not going to happen. So yeah. what are we going to do now? Is basically the question in order to make things as equal as we can. And, and some might argue that if your true goal is to get rid of marriage entirely, you should support everything that comes up to allow people to get married. If somebody creates a bill where they want to be able to marry their goldfish, you should support that because the more ludicrous marriage becomes, uh, the more likely it is that the, the whole infrastructure could possibly be uh, collapsed. But I don't know. I, I just, um, I like being married. Um, <laughs> Not, not just for the benefits of it, I, I generally like being married. I love my wife, I, I like uh, the things that commitments to other people do, um, and I hate seeing people who are clearly as in love with their partner as I am with my wife, who would love to be recognized in, you know, in public, both, both socially and legally, and who are denied that. Um, I, I think it's it's a pretty hateful thing. Yeah, I do agree that that is pretty hateful. Um, does that also include to polygamy that you're talking about? Because you said the best way to get marriage and non-issue is to legalize as much as possible. Does that include well, polygamy? Well, yeah, I, I would say vote for that uh, if that's the goal. Um, my, my take on polygamy uh, is that we don't necessarily have to go that far. I mean, you know, it's kind of a slippery slope argument that's often made. If you, if you let gay people marry, people will be marrying, you know, 20 people or their dog and all this other stuff. You can draw a line wherever. And the point is to make sure that we're drawing a line equitably um, and saying, yeah, you get one person that you get to share this legal benefit rather than your marriage corporation, I, I think is a reasonable place to draw a line. However, I know and have, I'm friends with a lot of people who are polyamorous um, and who 
are that might have been the word I was looking for but polygamy. I have no objection to better. I have no objection to polyamory. You love whoever you want. If it works for you and you're not hurting people and it's among consenting love everybody. Mm -hmm. Just be safe and I love John. Thank you for sitting <laughs> in with me today. Anyway, thanks for the call. All right, thanks for hearing me out. All right.